Yeah, if you want. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll kick off shortly, waiting for a few more. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the tunes, Ro. Um, excellent. Thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, Tim here uh, at Pendula. Really excited to talk to you about uh, delivering tailored subscription experiences, uh, and, and excited to share our native Zora solutions. Discuss a bit about how we can help make the subscriber experience a revenue driver for your for your organization. Now, I'd like to start by introducing our speakers today. Uh, Amanda is joining us from Arizona. She is the VP of Customer Success at Peak Commerce. Uh, Amanda has 11 years of experience in the Zora and broader subscription ecosystem, uh, ranging from impl implementations of Zora, CPQ, um, solutions, 
billing, other billing solutions as well, and, and is now helping customers get on board with Geek Commerce's subscription commerce platform. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Thanks for having me, Tim. Excellent. And uh, Alex Train, who's uh, my lovely boss, but also the Chief Revenue Officer of Pendula. Alex leads the sales strategy for Pendula and engages with organizations across the world to, to help them build great, uh, great experiences for their customers. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Good morning from Sydney, Australia. Good morning. So uh, love to, we'll kick off, um, talk a bit about who we are. Uh, Amanda, would you, would you like to start with us? Can you give us some background on peak commerce? Sure, thanks, Tim. Yeah, P-Commerce provides an e-commerce and multifaceted self-service platform that helps customers take charge of their subscription business, automate their self-service life cycle, and deliver an excellent subscriber experience. Um, just a little background about P-Commerce. We started out implementing quote to cash ecosystems. And during the course of implementing over 300 customers, most of them involving Zora, uh, we found the sticking point was when a customer would try to integrate with the various business systems from a self-service perspective. It was time consuming, it caused delays, and sometimes the teams didn't have the resources or the aptitude. Um, and this is where e-commerce comes in because we help to solve for all that pain and we have a wealth of additional capabilities that customers have come to us over the years for to help them automate their business processes. Yeah, certainly, uh, certainly a big challenge for a lot of Zora customers or Salesforce or any 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 billing system, um, you know, given the, the changes in how the business model works. Absolutely. And uh, and Alex, can you tell us a bit about Pendula? Yeah, um, Pendula is a subscription experience platform. Um, it allows our customers to create two-way conversations with their customers, and it connects to CRMs like Salesforce and billing platforms like Zora and enables our customers to create delightful customer experiences between them and their, and their customer base. Um, it originally started out as a more simple SMS solution and has slowly evolved to a fully featured um, configurable customer engagement platform. And our mission is actually to give our customers the power to make it easy to engage with their consumers throughout the life cycle, right from sign up to renewal. That's great, that's great. So. Today, um, we're really excited to discuss, um, like I said, our learnings from subscription organizations and subscribers about how they want to really engage or interact with you outside of their app or their platform, right? The subscriber experience isn't really just about how they you know, interact with your services or read or watch your content. It's how you provide a, a personalized experience every step of the journey. So uh, we'll talk a bit about how our solutions make it easier for organizations to create a great subscriber experience. We'll hop into the, to, to the kit and, uh, and show our platforms. We'll uh, discuss some of the results our customers are seeing and we'll save time for, uh, for Q&A. So when we talk about building relationships um, through the experience, uh, it's, it's evident from the attendees on this webinar that every industry is, is embracing subscriptions. What we've learned really hooks customers for a long time is, is building a great experience. And um, we talk about the subscriber experience. We don't just focus on the UI. We talk about setting a company vision to help develop amazing subscriber relationships, um, keeping them connected regardless of what stage they're at in the journey with you, and continuing to find ways to deliver value. Uh, and so why are we both here? Um, well, peak commerce and Pendula give your customers a way to interact based on their own preference. Uh, gives you as a provider of subscriptions uh, or provider of a product, new acquisition channels and new ways to engage and, and really help deliver what we call an, an omni-channel experience. Now, what are the, some of the expectations of your subscribers? You know, we've, we've we got folks on here that have spent a lot of time with subscription companies. Alex, curious to what you're seeing, uh, if you could share your experience in working with subscription companies and their customers from a you know, conversational communication standpoint. Yeah, um, so, I mean, what we're seeing is, is this increasing level of demand from different from companies, from different industries, um, for them to be able to provide a, a really fantastic experience for their customers in a wide, you know, wide range of interaction points. 
Um, and, and customers, you know, they really want the best from the companies and the service providers that they interact with in terms of a personalized tailored service, as well as, you know, being able to provide feedback back to them based on the, their experience as a consumer. And for us, it's, you know, it's really a new concept, and, but we're wanting to bring that conversational communication right inside of Zora. Um, and that's really because of what we've, we've learned subscribers want and expect from their service providers. And they, they really do want that, that terrific experience. They, they want to be able to interact and provide feedback. And they, they, they want it to be on their terms sometimes. They want to be able to do that where their uh, preference is in terms of how to be engaged. So can you, can you share a bit about where this is being leveraged? Yeah, yeah. look, a really good example is a, a major utility here in Australia, uh, Origin Energy, uh, and, and they communicate with their customers about things like dynamically adjusting the power usage during hot weather. You know, obviously, Australia, quite a hot country. Um, during very hot periods, everyone's using the air conditioner at the same times of the day. And, and what they're actually doing is that they're not only communicating with the to confirm their int intention to participate in these events, it's called a demand response event. Um, and that is to confirm their intention if they'd like to participate and potentially reduce their power, you know, their air conditioners use, et cetera, during these hot, hot events. Um, the responses from the customers are actually then recorded and actioned. Um, so therefore the, the uh, smart devices adjust the usage of the air conditioner, et cetera. But also if they meet the goals of reducing their power, they're you know, informed that it, that, that it succeeded, but then credits also applied directly back into the billing system. So it kind of like a really closed loop um, between everything from the initial engagement, participation, confirmation, and then adjustments back to the, the rate plan charges. So a, a really cool example of, of working across the life cycle with the customer. And, and saving a lot of cost for the energy provider on the grid and same for the subscriber uh, when they get that uh, get that discount on their their invoice. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, and, and a big part of it is around you know the, the feedback loop that they're able to then incorporate back into um, decisions they make as an organization. Interesting. And and Amanda, I guess same question for you. What are you seeing in terms of the the e-commerce or the the online experience from you know the companies that you're working with and, and their subscribers? Great question, Tim. Um, the concept behind e commerce's e-commerce experience is the ability to create any number of subscriber experiences to support things like A-B and multivariate testing for any cohort of customers. So as an example, a customer could have one cohort of prospects land on one e-commerce page, whereas another cohort access a different version. And the landing pages extend beyond um, the e-commerce experience. They extend to all four of our monetization engines, um, which is e-commerce experience, the customer self-service, the CSR self-service, and the partner self-service. Okay, okay. And, we, and you, you touched a bit about um, A-B testing and we've talked a little bit about, you know, extending customer value here. Can you tell me about, you know, kind of how important is it for your customers to, to A-B test? Sure. Um, customers need to be able to test the efficacy of A-B testing of their, their landing pages and self-service pages, excuse me, through A-B testing. Um, the placement of product tiles, different product pairings, color, verbiage are just some examples of things they're trying out. Um, so e-commerce is designed to help customers get the analytics behind that various testing. And it's important to understand that customers utilize our platform in various capacities. Some may have a landing page for a certain offering. Some may do A-B testing. Some may have us internally instantiated within their product. And some may be having their partners self-service for their end customers. And through all of those different experiences, they need, um, they need to be able to validate the need to tailor the experience to the demographic of the customer. Yeah, so, so I'm assuming that when you tailor that experience, you're probably hoping or, or you know, maybe able to increase the opportunity for upsell or cross-sell because you're giving them a specific page or maybe you know, some sort of churn reduction type page as well if, if they're, you're starting to see something like that decline. Absolutely. There's a lot of different things you can touch on there. Cool. So let's, let's chat a bit about some of the, the benefits. Um, you know, in my experience, Amanda, I'm sure same with yours, um, Building solutions like this 
on your own can can typically be difficult. Um, if it's you know it's a custom build, the customer experience team and business users really really can't control. So, Amanda, what are you seeing as some of the benefits of looking at a solution like Peak versus building your own? Great question. So, Peak Commerce is really an easy plug and play solution not only with Zora, but also with Salesforce and identity providers. We've seen that there are certain teams that have a keen acumen to work with Zora, but then there are others that need an off-the-shelf solution, right? And this is why we are perfect for those customers, especially when we can get up and running as little as 30 to 45 days. Just recently, we got Carta up and running within 30 days, which is pretty amazing. Um, we also have great features such as the ability to bundle Zora rate plans. So a customer can offer a one-click purchase of a bundle of many services for an easy checkout process. Uh, we also have customers who have used us in a capacity where, like I mentioned before, we're embedded into their product and embracing the headless architecture model. A headless architecture model. Mm -hmm. That's cool. What, uh, mm -hmm. what, makes, what makes Peak different than you know, a, a, a typical e-commerce provider out there? Um, so typically we get that question a lot. So those systems were designed for ordering and buying usually a single product. The legacy storefronts aren't architected for the cyclical nature of a subscriber. Um, so that's why e-commerce was built to support either, um, but with a strong emphasis on the subscriber experience. And that's why we have those four different engines I was talking about, the e-commerce, the customer's portal, the partner portal, and the um, CSR portal. Okay, okay. And, and Alex, uh, similar question to you, what are, what are some of the benefits that our, our customers are seeing? Um, yep, so there's a, there's a couple of key things, like the first one being that we're native on Zora. Um, so then access, access to all of the, you know, real personalized and relevant contextual info is right there. You don't have to put a lot of effort into engineering and connecting to it via APIs, et cetera. It's, it's very straightforward and quick, quick to get it up and running. Um, the configuration control stuff, being at pushing, pushing the tool into the hands of the business users and the product managers, et cetera, so that they can actually define how they, they want to interact with customers themselves. And, and so time to value again is, is, is incredibly quick and allowing them to rapidly test new, new products and packaging and test taking these things to market with a, a live customer base real quick. Um, and, you know, the backside of that is getting the feedback based on offers, et cetera, and being able to update Zora records directly. So in, in terms of, of, you know, actual impact on things like subscriptions and preventing churn, et cetera, it's direct and, and, and rapid. And, and what I really love actually about both the Peak and Pendula as a pair is that between the two of them, they can, we can allow customers and we, sorry, we can cater to any customer's preference around the channel that they want to engage on and the type of thing that you're trying to have them complete, you know? So if you're wanting them to self-service their account, they can use, they can use Peak. And if you wanted to push new offers and promotions and try and prevent churn and do winbacks, you can use tools like Pendula and then both working together on the Zora stack is just, is wonderful for our customer base. Yeah, yeah, certainly, um, you know, it's kind of supporting either end of, uh, you know, the customer life cycle, right? And, uh, and I guess it's great that, you know, some of these, some of these things that as you as subscription companies are trying to build a, a better subscriber experience and really control that and, and also give these capabilities back to your customers. Um, you know, you don't, hopefully don't need the engineering team or the IT team that would need to build this stuff out, uh, certainly because of native solutions like, like ours. So let's, uh, Amanda, you ready to, to hop into it? Let's show how we can uh, make it easy for Zora customers. Sure. All right. So I'm going to take us through an example of a subscriber experience, and then I'll show how easy it is to create an update from the admin side of the platform. And the example I'm going to show is an enterprise organization, Veris, that wanted their initial e-commerce page to be simplistic and modeled after Adobe. Um, so with the help of their marketing team and our experience team, we have a simplistic experience. So let me share my screen. Oh, I can't share my screen while well, you're sharing yours. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Can you see my screen okay? Yep. Perfect. Um, so this is typically the first page most customers land on, which is a product page. They, they pick a product that they want to buy. 
Um, and again, we help with, like I said, with their marketing teams and our experience team, we help to make it look like their website. So it doesn't look like you've left a whole other um, and, and gone to a whole other site. So here, I'm gonna just pick a product and in their model, they wanted two clicks. They wanted you to pick the product and then pick how often you're gonna pay. And it's just, again, another marketing um, to get them to you know, pick different options. So it, it doesn't have to be two pages, it can be one. Um, and it, it necessarily doesn't have to look like this either. So again, we work with their team. This is a sign up page. So I'm gonna sign up really quick. Um, and something important to note here is that we integrate um, with um, CRM systems like I mentioned Salesforce to where um, when I finish signing up here, uh, maybe, <laughs> um, a lead can be created over in Salesforce. Also, uh, most people use identity providers now, Auth0, Okta, um, AWS, right? They have one as well. So we integrate with those. So users get created so they can come back and sign in. So they don't have to sign up every time. So there's lots of integrations going on in the background um, that allows marketing teams to follow up. And that's a great point too, where if they drop off in this process, which I know you're gonna show in a minute, um, is another place where Pendula can pick up and go back. If they don't fill out the information here, if they don't confirm. Um, so let me fill this out really quick. Again, all this information um, we work with companies on to um, determine what information do they need to get from their customers and what information do they not need to get. So this can be as many fields as you want. This can be as simple as you want. So this is just the field we did, uh, fields we did, excuse me, for Verisk. All right, so let's finish filling this out here. All right, and then we have our confirm page, right? Basically what you're signing up for and checking out. All right, so once the sign up form is filled out, details are submitted to Salesforce, but like I said, um, the, what's great about this is they have signed up, um, but in the process before, if they ever drop out, there's multi um, different systems that we were talking about that you could go down uh, to reach back out to the customer and be like, come back, right? Um, so a lot of things are happening here. Uh, you, we can convert that lead that we create in Salesforce to a customer account. We're creating the Zora account. We're creating the subscription, the invoice, the payment, um, sending them any type of email notifications that need to go out. Um, and we're also sending that information back to the identity providers. So when they sign back in, um, all of that information is presented to them with their subscription and their Zora account information. Um, let me switch screens and I'll go into our admin side that I said I was going to quickly show. Um, and I mentioned earlier, it's easy to iterate on pages. I think we have some customers who have like over 400 different types of e-commerce pages because they use from that A-B testing um, and different promos. And they're really easy to set up um, in within peak commerce. So if I were to come in and hit edit on one, they're very simplistic. Um, choosing a segment, a segment's the biggest one. We, we like to kind of call that segment or journeys. Um, what journey is the customer gonna go on? And those are really easy to set up as well. If I show that really quick and grab a segment. All right, so if I do new order, where's our, where's our exact one? All right. And again, this is tailoring to what type of products are we gonna show on this page? Are we gonna categorize them in any way? Are there rules, right? In what order do we go? Um, and then there's just a bunch of configurations that you set in terms of defaults to set within Salesforce and or Zora when creating those accounts. So the UI interface, again, like you were mentioning, Tim, we, you don't need to be a developer to come in here to create a segment or journey and apply it to a page. Um, sure, there's some HTML styling, some CSS styling um, that is pretty light, uh, but for the most part, you don't have to have uh, developers maintain the side of it. 
um, which is really nice. Typically product teams or customer service teams manage peak commerce. Really cool, really cool. And I can see even, you know, design side, it's it's still a, a marketing person potentially, right? So. Yes, absolutely. So typically the mark, the product people work very closely with the marketing teams for, again, for the A-B testing. Okay, now let's try this offer and let's try that offer and let's try this colors and let's try just one, you know, one offer and we bundle it on our side versus having them to um, click. The less clicks sometimes the better and to get them to check out. Exactly. Exactly. Now let's figure out what to do when someone like Sally gets busy, right? So uh, very often, uh, you know, quite common, I'm sure we see is that we get interrupted in the middle of the day. We were in, you know, lockdown over here for a while. I'm sure Alex and the, his children were interrupting all the time in our meetings. Um, but so what happens when someone like Sally at uh, who's looking to purchase from Varus gets interrupted? Um, you know, she may not complete the portal, she may not complete the window, she may have questions, things like that. She may drop off and there's you know, potentially no way to get uh, to get really back connected with her. So uh, let's, you know, take a look at Pendula. So you could see I have uh, a number of different flows here that that fit around the subscription world, uh, you know, pricing promo, payment failures, usage upsell, um, invoice delivery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into my, my card abandonment. Uh, flow essentially. And the reason we'll do that is because Peek has told us that Sally's dropped off at, uh, at the page. And, um, you know, we need to, we need to be able to reach out back to Sally. We don't want to wait until tomorrow for a sales rep to reach out. Um, what we've also found is that uh, a channel such as email isn't really the best way to try and connect back with a customer. Um, and SMS is immediate. SMS is directly to their, you know, their most uh, most used asset. Essentially, I would consider a mobile phone an asset. So let's talk about how we communicate back with Sally. Now, the first step to ensure we're communicating with Sally at the optimal time, um, Pendula could deliver a communications on demand. So as an example here on an event, uh, and that could be when a new lead is created or Sally's page is updated, maybe when a new promo is, is created inside of Zora, or we can send something on a schedule, uh, like a specific time frame around a marketing campaign. In this case, we're sending Sally a message on demand. Peek just told us she dropped off a minute ago. You know, we don't want to wait to reach out. Um, what we're also doing is because Peak uh, Commerce Customer Verisk is A-B testing their pricing pages, I could essentially trigger off a flow for anyone whose abandonment page in this example is, is one of the pricing pages. So let's go ahead and take a look at, now that we've set our, our triggers, um, how we actually go ahead and, and create a flow. So in the center here, I have what we call our drag and drop canvas. So one of the unique features around Pendula uh, is that there's no code behind this. It's all uh, drag and drop workflow. Our engineers did all the code. Um, so it makes it really easy for any sort of business user, whether you're in marketing or finance, to go ahead and, and create these journeys. Now, my drag and drop canvas here in the center. Uh, and then on the side, I have my notes. So I have my conversation notes, like my outbound or inbound SMS. I have my time delays for you know, my workflows. I have a criteria filter. Um, and then I have my data notes. So I can go back and update fields uh, in our, you know, whichever database we're connected to. I can go ahead and do things like add or remove rate plans in Zora. So now one of the um, design flows that I've already created here is you know, one of the key powers of Pendula uh, that I'll hop into a minute. And it shows our real access to some of the data inside of Zora. Now, I've started our, um, our flow here with what we call a criteria split. So um, as a success path, essentially, we're going to develop a new flow for customers that dropped off at page A2, which is the, the page that, uh, that Peak Commerce Customer Verisk ended with. If they go um, from pricing page B2, they'll essentially go down another route. So we're also able to A-B test um, our journeys depending on what, what peak commerce is telling us. So I'm gonna drag in here my outbound SMS, connect my nodes together. And it's really easy for us to grab a template that we already have. 
Uh, in this case, uh, hi, Sally, this is Alex from Veris. So using mail merge fields here. I noticed you look into upgrading to our limited plan. Check out the offer for we have for you now. And I you know, have a link here that'll, that'll be clickable for Sally. And that'll deliver her directly back into uh, the page for Verisk. And at this case, this now has 15% off. Um, so we're delivering a personalized experience for Sally. We know what subscription she's currently on. We know what offer we want to provide to her to try and get her to convert. And our two solutions are working together to, to drive that. I'll just hit save here. Now, there are a couple instances where you know, maybe Sally doesn't take up that offer. Um, that's where the real conversational nature of Pendula comes in. So as an example, you know, we may wait a day. So I'm gonna pull in what we call a time period delay. And let's see what happens. Uh, maybe Sally has additional questions. So we wanna try and schedule some time with a sales rep. So I'm gonna build out a little bit more comprehensive journey here. Another outbound SMS after waiting a day. And I'll drop in my, uh, hopefully I grab the right template. The template that says, hey, we noticed you didn't, uh, you did, you didn't take up our offer. You know, we're using the Zora data and the peak commerce data to recheck to see what she did. Maybe she has a couple more questions. So I'm gonna drop a note from her sales rep to say, you know, let's try and schedule a call to discuss. And if she is interested, um, what I'm doing here is I'm understanding the context of the conversation. So let's just say Sally comes back and says yes, or yep, or pretty please. Uh, I love Verisk, we'll give her a couple options. Um, that's gonna then prompt our team and our, our sales team to understand that Sally would like a call. Okay, so she's come in and said yes. I can go back and update the CRM to say, hey, she said yes. Let's try and figure out when the best time is to call. As a salesperson myself, I know that it's really difficult to get leads on the phone. Um, we see this is really popular in a lot of our B2C customers. I'm gonna drop in a, a callback template. So, hey, what is the best time for us to give, give you a call? And really interesting enough, uh, another conversational nature is we're gonna let Sally respond with whatever she'd like, as opposed to a specific time frame like we were doing before, a time like we were doing before. Sally could say morning, afternoon, night, 11 p.m., 12 p.m. Really helps us <clears throat> have a conversation when Sally is expecting our call, as opposed to us randomly giving her a ring. Okay, so now we've hopefully pushed her back to the page. If she has additional questions, we're still trying to keep her from dropping out. Now, let's take a look at what happens when uh, maybe someone's gone to page B2. We want to do a little bit of A-B testing. So we've designed, like I said, that criteria split. If they go to pricing B2, what we're then doing is we're dropping Sally an offer if she's interested and wants to do this through SMS that says, hey, Sally, would you be interested in um, upgrading with 15% off? So we are delivering Sally a message uh, that she'll be able to take up immediately. So once again, this is her sales rep from Verisk uh, off providing this offer. If Sally comes back and says again, yes, yep, wonderful, um, whatever she'd like, we're then doing a couple things. And this is through our native integration with Zora. We are going to remove a rate plan. So in this case, we know Sally's on the $20 rate plan, uh, five gigabytes unlimited. Um, and we know we want to do this immediately. We, want to, we don't want to wait a day to change our plan. So we're going to change these contract effective service activation dates to today. So we're removing her rate plan. At the same time, we're going to add a rate plan in Zora. So we're making a change to her subscription, um, upgrading her to the 20 gigabyte unlimited plan I don't know why you'd have a five gigabyte or 20 gigabyte unlimited plan, but I guess it's going to make sense today. So, uh, and also those are going to happen today. So we're going to do that immediately. We're then going to close the loop. You know, best practice, say, hey, great, we've, we've upgraded you to our unlimited plan. This is a template, but if I want to go ahead and customize this template here as well, maybe I'll just go ahead and drop in my lead owner. Just so they know, hey, this is your personalized experience. I'll hit save there. And then we've also dropped her an email. So we have her invoice here, we have a receipt, 
we're picking up the D attachment from Zora. So we've delivered her an SMS and now we've delivered her receipt as well. So very easy drag and drop template builder that can, she can see and, and be very responsive to. So in just a few minutes, we've gone ahead and had a conversation or seen Sally through the website through Peak, um, which is really great. If Sally does get interrupted and dropped off, we have a couple ways to try and re-engage with her through SMS. Um, if we'd like, we could also trigger off a communications to say her app um, and have a push notification there. So a lot of different ways to go ahead and communicate with Sally if she'd like, um, or we can drive her back to the website and use these two solutions really well together. So I would just go ahead and save and activate. And this flow is really ready to go, um, ready for any, uh, any customers to start receiving conversational communications from us. On that note, I will stop my demo. And Amanda, how does that look? Does it look like they uh, they can work work really nicely yeah, together. They do. I think I think it's a very nice pairing. Yeah. You know, nice. kind of. I think Alex had mentioned it before, but it's one of those where there's lots of different customers nowadays. Where, especially with all the technologies in front of us, right? Some people just live in front of the computer. Some people just live with their phone in front of them. You know, so some prefer email versus text, right? So I think it's it's a nice, there's different avenues depending on their preference. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, we wanna make sure that we can reach them if they like email, reach them if they'd like, uh, if they'd like you know, SMS or, or reach them if they wanna go back to the website. Really cool. Yeah. So now we can talk a bit about some of the success that we've seen with, <clears throat> with our customers. Um, as it's sharing, so great. So some of those success, right? We talked about uh, how to engage with them. We talked a bit about how to um, how do we sorry how to engage with them. How do we how do we get companies to to start leveraging this platform? Well, the kind of the devil's in the details, right? Carl Gold had said, you know, we want to give customers the ability to control, and if they have that ability and they make you know one change per year, those those customers or those companies are growing you know, a lot faster. So uh, Alex, I'd love to start with you. Um, you know, we see that subscriber engagement is huge here. That subscription experience is huge. Um, can you talk about uh, you know, some of the success that you're seeing with, with some of the customers through this? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so maybe a quick example. Um, we have a, a telco down here in Australia known as Amazim. And they use Pendula as part of a, you know, a broader customer loyalty program that they run. Um, and that's a, a bunch of areas, but, you know, predominantly around retention, things like cross sell, upsell and, and doing stuff like, you know, celebrating good milestones with their customers. And, and what Pendula does is it communicates with their customers when things like their usage is high, that it encourages them to upgrade. Um, it interacts with them when things happen, like they don't renew their service, like they, their month to month plan starts to, um, drop off and they identify at that point in time, you know, this person's potentially going to churn um, and with the intention to win them back. And really what's quite cool is that it, it, being able to engage just in time when maybe normally you, you can't and like, for example, right when they churn is, is quite powerful stuff and, and pushing things like SMS retention journeys right to them right at that point in time. Um, provides companies like Amazing the opportunity to win back the business that they and, and they can action it right there and then, and the customer can just reply. You know, so they're pushing offers right at the point when they, they potentially churn. Customer can reply to opt back in and win them back. So they've had a really, really nice uptick in their conversion rate of running those journeys, particularly through that channel. And what we found is things like email as a channel is not as effective. And we did we actually did a a comparison, a direct comparison. And email just wasn't as effective at winning them back because mainly because the, the engagement's not there and they're not on email, they're on their phone on that device. So a, a perfect example of using the right channel for the right purpose. Great, great. You, you talked a bit earlier about wanting to be, or <clears throat> maybe it's a psychological thing, the, the, the subscriber wanting to be heard or being able to be to be heard by the, by the organization. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that, that whole feedback loop concept, you know, really afforded to our customers um, through this channel. Um, 
the, the communication platform provides people, you know, people like product managers. It really gives them the ability to grab in really invaluable insight into customer reactions to things like, you know, pricing, packaging, and, you know, even complaints and so on, but really around like the, the product offerings and, and the feedback to, to those offers being pushed out and giving those product managers the ability to, you know, not only put those offers and, and plays into market rapidly, really quickly straight out of the product catalog, um, and doing it themselves with their engineers, but on top of that, collecting all the data about the the reactions from real customers, you know, and, and in pretty much in real time. That's really cool. So they can go ahead and, and get that detail, or maybe a sales rep gets that detail saying, "Hey, you know, I don't, I want a better offer," uh, and they can go ahead and action that right away, or use the details from the customer to to iterate on their product or make any sort of changes. Correct. So in, in the case of the Mason, what, what they were getting back was all these different um, responses that related to the data upsell offers that they were pushing. And a number of the customers were saying, eh, I'm not really you know, that excited by what you're offering me. If you were to give me, and they were being somewhat cheeky, but asking for more data, then I'd be keen. I'd go ahead. So what they did was they looked at all those responses across the, the broader um, set of customers interacting back and they incorporate that into the kinds of product and packaging that they want to incorporate and build. So, yeah, really, really, you know, cool results that they're seeing. And then also a way the, the business can adapt uh, really quickly. Yeah. And Amanda, what about, what about on the, the peak commerce side, you got a, a number of Zora customers that you're working with. Um, you know, what are, what are they seeing? Yeah, I think, you know, especially from this slide, you know, and something we've hit on before is kind of the faster time to market. And that's something that within Peak, they're really able to achieve. Um, <clears throat> we've had several customers actually migrate off of Salesforce communities and come over to Peak Commerce. And some of that was going back to the earlier slide, um, like we were talking about, like I was saying here, faster time to market, because um, it was more cumbersome and took longer to get new product offerings out to their customers on communities. Their conversion rates have increased, like we've seen here, and um, because they can launch different landing pages quickly. Um, and because customers can interact with their subscriptions easily and in many different ways, whether it's the e-commerce experience, whether it's the self-service portal experience, um, they stayed more engaged and longer in their contract. And I mentioned, you know, moving off the of Salesforce communities. Well, with one of those customers that migrated over to Peak, in the beginning, that company basically saw the same um, performance between communities and Peak Commerce. But over time, they were able to iterate within the commerce a lot faster, trying different landing page, then they drastically saw the decrease of shopping cart abandonment, which is great. And this is why we believe in the parity between the commerce and Pendula, because these are further touch points to the subscriber to keep them engaged and keep the best offer in front of them to increase their lifetime value. Awesome, awesome. And I'd ask a few questions, but we have, uh... We have a few that I think are going to be that are you know, going to be related to uh, so what you were just talking about, Amanda. Um, okay. So let's let's hop on into the Q and A. Um, there's okay. a, a few popping in. Um, so I guess the the first question to you, Amanda, is um, and if there are any other questions in the honest, feel free to drop them in. What kind of <laughs> what common kind of A/B testing strategies are you are you seeing? Um, that's a good question. And we mentioned some before, um, but A-B testing isn't one size fit all. So we were kind of talking about before, which is the um, testing of different bundlings, uh, different product pairings, um, different page layouts, the number of steps, right? Like I was talking about before, how Veris had, um, you pick first your product and then how often you wanna pay. And those are two steps. And some customers tried it with two steps and some customers tried it with one. Um, some customers defaulted all of that and it's just, here's one offering, do you want it or not? And not offering options. So um, I think there's a lot of different options there that, you, that they're able to test on. Okay, okay. And, and I guess I'll, I'll shift gears. I'll kind of go, go one to the other, but um, Alex, what do you see as a, the question is, what do you see as the difference between a, you know, a, a Pendula and something like a, you know, a Twilio? Yep. So, um, you mean Twilio is a, a great piece of technology. Um, what it is, is obviously a set of building blocks for someone to build um, these sorts of solutions themselves. 
and Pendular is a, a, a fully formed solution um, that our customers can plug in and works natively with something like Zora. Um, big part of what Pendular does, and you saw in the demo that you, you ran us through, is it's very, you know, the UI side of things. And it's, it's a software solution where you can actually start using it and build it straight away as opposed to having to build it and work with APIs, et cetera. So a different approach to a similar problem. Um, probably the biggest difference is that we're native on Zora and it's a, it's a full drag and drop um, GUI driven solution. All right. Uh, question for, I guess, both of you. Um, you know, Zora recently just did a big launch. Um, talk about monetizing anything as a service. Um, how, does, how does Peak work with, uh, with the, new, the new Zora? Great question. So most of our customers have multiple items as part of their offering of their subscription. So it's a lot of the times there's recurring, there's one time and there's usage. And in the, even in this, our self-service side, we have the ability for customers to see their usage and in, in drawdown graphs and being able to export that data as well. Okay. Okay. And uh, Alex, same, same to you. Is there, you know, any limitations on the on the Pendula side and working with Zora? Yeah, Pendula has access to to everything in the Zora stack, which is terrific for personalization and the, the right context of sending the right thing in relation, you know, at the right time and in relation to the right objects, you know, whether it's subscription or you know the account, etc. Um, so that that's a real, you know, that's actually a real benefit. Okay, uh, and back to Amanda. Um, how does peak commerce integrate with maybe their app, a customer's app or their, their own uh, platform? Um, this is a great question. We've done this on numerous occasions um, in various different ways. We're that extensible, which is nice. Um, so kind of what's under the hood of peak commerce allows us to easily connect to any system and securely. Um, we utilize Authera as our connectivity service, our IDP. Uh, which was recently acquired by Okta, which is great. Um, and as a partner of theirs, they are also happy to explore architecture options if we need. So we've definitely gotten them on the phone before and, and worked with them to make sure that everything um, is secure from their product to our product. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I could see that as being uh, being very common when those those pieces also need to work really jointly together. Okay. Absolutely. 